All right, so this is a uh, Customer's Carts 2019 Nissan Rogue, um, and they wanted to powder coat the uh, calipers red. Uh, they have some other red accents on the car, uh, so they wanted to powder coat those to match. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, first, we'll start by loosening all the lug nuts. We'll uh, jack it up, put it on jack stands, uh, remove the wheels, uh, remove the calipers, <clears throat> sandblast the calipers, degrease them. Uh, then apply the powder coat, bake, uh, and then reinstall them onto the car. All right, just one thing I like to do is um, use these uh, rubber pads on everything that's going to touch the underside of the vehicle. So this is a uh, jack stand pad. It goes on the, uh, of course, goes on the jack stand, but then the pinch weld uh, on the unibody cars sits in there, and that keeps from uh, from damaging the uh, undercoating on the vehicle. And then same on my floor jack, um, use this rubber pad on there to keep from uh, scratching whatever I'm uh, jacking on, whether it be the front or rear subframe. Next, um, so we've got the wheels off. Uh, next we're going to take the calipers off uh, and the caliper brackets. Uh, so to do that, uh, there's two bolts on the back of the caliper, one top, one bottom, and then the uh, black line, brake line banjo fitting, uh, and then there's two larger bolts. Uh, top and bottom that'll get the whole assembly off uh, I'll take the pads out um, and the keepers uh, then we'll get them into the sandblaster so we've got it apart now um, so we took the caliper off it had two uh, 12 millimeter bolts uh, then we pulled the caliper pins out that's what the caliper slides in the caliper bracket on when the brakes are applied um, took the pads and the clips out um, <clears throat> and then we took the caliper bracket off um, it had two 19 millimeter bolts holding it uh, and then we took the bleeder screw out of the caliper uh, to get the caliper ready for cleaning so we'll go ahead and degrease both of these and sandblast them and then get them powder coated so this is what the uh, caliper bracket looks like after we get it out of the sandblaster um, so I'm using a uh, glass bead media uh, on about 60 psi so just enough to knock the uh, debris off of it, but not really get into the get into the metal or anything. All right, and to get this ready for powder coating, uh, basically any holes that are threaded um, or that like the pins go into, you want to make sure to uh, plug those off so you don't get any powder coat in there. Um, so I use these uh, high temp silicone uh, plugs. They just sit in there, give them a good push, and they'll hold in there while you have it in the oven. So we've got the uh, caliper bracket uh, preheated. I like to heat it for about 20 minutes in the oven at uh, baking temperature. Uh, and then we've got the powder coat ground hooked up. Um, have this compressorless powder coat gun. Basically, it has a little cartridge here you load the powder in, and then it has a fan on the back that blows the powder out. Uh, and so the ground is there because the powder picks up a static charge from the gun, and uh, that helps it cling to the part, um, gets in all the crevices. Um, so we're going to spray the powder real quick and then get this back in the oven and bake it. Okay, so we've got a nice even coat. Make sure all the cracks and crevices are covered. Then we'll stick it back in the oven, bake it for about 20 minutes and uh, pull it out and let it cool down. All right, so here's the uh, first caliper bracket out of the oven. Turned out pretty good. So now we've got the uh, caliper bracket back installed, got the brake pads installed, got the caliper pins installed, um, added more grease to them. Uh, so next we'll mount the uh, caliper, reinstall the brake line, and then uh, this hub will be finished. We're putting uh, the caliper back on. Um, when you're putting the brake line back on, make sure you have uh, both crush washers on. There should be one that goes uh, against the head of the bolt <coughs> and then one that goes against the body of the caliper. Uh, and that's what seals off the uh, banjo bolt uh, on the brake line. All right, so on the rear caliper, uh, basically it's going to be the same thing as the front uh, with the exception of the electronic parking brake. So it has a little uh, two-pin connector. 
It has a little push tab. Press it in to release, and then it slides right off. Uh, <clears throat> same thing though, two bolts holding the caliper to the bracket, and then uh, two bolts holding the bracket to the hub. Uh, the brake line, uh, brake line bolt, and it should come right off. All right, so on the back caliper, a little bit different than the front. It had uh, two T30 Torx holding on the uh, electronic parking brake. Uh, I had to use an assortment of tools to get to the bolts uh, because the brake line bracket uh, was kind of in the way of using a uh, standard socket and ratchet to get to that top uh, bolt. So I ended up using a uh, offset box end wrench, but it worked out pretty good. So after you have the calipers back on, uh, tighten all the bleeder screws so they don't leak. Uh, and then uh, come up and uh, you want to make sure to top off the reservoir um, <clears throat> and then you can start the bleeding process starting at the uh, wheels furthest away from the uh, master cylinder so that would be the rear wheels um, <clears throat> and then this is what I'm using for the video I have an electric uh, vacuum pump that works a lot faster but this one you can get for about 20 bucks um, I'll link it below um, so essentially uh, you have this is a handheld vacuum pump works pretty decent uh, and then you have your chamber so this is what the uh, fluid will be trapped in and then that is uh, connected to the bleeder valve and then I have just a box and wrench on the bleeder valve so I can open and close it um, I'll build up some vacuum pressure uh, crack the bleeder valve uh, let it pull air and fluid out. Um, basically, for each caliper, it seems if I fill this cup up about twice, then uh, that's got all the air out of the system. So we'll do that a few times. Um, put the wheels and tires back on. Um, test the brakes a couple times. One other thing to mention, um, after you bleed each uh, wheel caliper, uh, come back up and check your reservoir because you definitely don't want to run out of fluid because then you'll have to start all over again. So check it, top it off uh, as you move between calipers. All right, so we have it back together now. It turned out pretty nice. Two, the two-tone wheels with the uh, red behind it is a nice contrast. Thanks for watching.